Okay, in this video I'll talk about making a starter for beer and um, for brewing beer. And it's going to be 1400 mLs, which is sort of gives me some space so I don't have boil overs. And uh, that's so many gallons or whatever. And I use um, Beersmith and type in the gallons that, uh, that I calculated it out. And um, then I have to figure out how much DME to put in there. And um, I think this was, I did this basically by trial and error on got to the point of having um, about a 1040 um, uh, concentration of DME. And um, I need to measure that out. It turns out that that many pounds is 5.5 ounces. So um, I put uh, the, the uh, flask on the scale and I hit the tear button which subtracts the weight of the scale and then I just drop in the DME till I get it uh, about to the right amount. It's not doesn't have to be perfect there. Anything roughly around there should be good. Um, then I fill up the flask to approximately where I you know suggested like you know 1400 mLs and uh, I have this coat hanger little thing that you're supposed to use when you use glass on this kind of a stove and um, and so I put that on there and then put my uh, put my flask on there and uh, I keep measuring the temperature because um, you don't you want to know when it's going to boil because when it boils you have to pick it up otherwise it'll make a mess so here it's starting to boil here it's um, it's you know getting getting to the point where if you just left it there it would definitely boil over and make a mess so I basically just let it start getting going as good as you know as far as I think I can let it and then I pull it off there and and uh, let it calm down and sort of go back and forth until until I can um, be confident that's not going to boil over on me sort of same thing when you're making a real batch of beer you know if you if you just don't watch it, it'll boil over on you. Um, so yeah, so it gets going here, and um, and then this is this is a little conversation that I had with my wife. New beer. We're gonna start. Do you not always do a starter? Not always. What's the difference? Bigger beer, um, higher gravity. Oh. You need a higher, a starter for high gravity? Yep. And you put that in there in addition to the regular process? You put the regular yeast in this first, and then it builds up. Oh. So it's just an extra step yep. to make it more potent. Yeah, more yeast bodies to start eating right away. And normally I wouldn't have left it in there, but I thought it was sort of cute. <laughs> So anyway, um, pull it off and um, need to uh, get get it sealed up here. Um, wrapping, uh, uh, I just use aluminum foil and, and a rubber band. And uh, now I gotta chill that sucker down. Um, you know, you could just let it sit out on the counter if you had more time. But I thought, well, I'll, um, I got ice. So uh, I put this thing in a bath of ice. And then of course, you know, I, didn't check it um, enough and ended up um, ended up uh, getting too cold. But anyway, here's here's my yeast, which uh, I guess it, it must have been in the door there. I don't know why it was not as cold as my refrigerator. But anyway, um, I kept uh, yeah. So there it is. It's too cold. Um, and I was trying to show the time here, but then you know, basically, it's just going to take a little while for you to equalize the temperatures. So once the temperatures were about the same. I um, I uh, sanitized the uh, the uh, opening of the yeast container and um, opened it up and uh, poured it in and uh, it, it it actually fizzed up and sort of you know it, you know came out a little bit uh, and spilled over a little bit because when I shook it up it uh, it um, sort of you know I guess it uh, emitted some CO2. And then it sort of was a glop in there and didn't come out right away. But um, anyway, managed to get that, put the rubber band, rubber band back on. And uh, I have a stir bar in there. I didn't show you that, but I, I actually went ahead and boiled the stir bar. I usually just throw it in there with the DME. 
Um, and uh, so here we are firing up the uh, stir plate. And so now I just leave it for a long time. Um, basically I'll show you some cuts here of time passing. So here's the next morning and uh, sort of got a layer of layer of foam on it and a sort of a big big thing of foam in the center there on the surface and uh, still got some foam on it it's sort of hard to see what's going on here with the video camera but you know still got a, a pile of foam in the center there on that um, and so here's day three in the morning and you can see a lot of a lot of flex in there and right now if you look there's sort of the krausen has gone down and there's no there's no foam on the on the top in the center anymore well there's a few bubbles but not uh you know not like it used to be so i think that's about done so i'm gonna stick it in the fridge here and uh have the yeast settle out when they get cold they'll end up in the bottom more all right and so here's the the uh, afternoon of the fourth day i'm i'm gonna make up another i am build up another so i'm weighing out some more um dme and uh I'm, uh, I'm, this time I'm going to sort of improvise into a, a glass pitcher that I have that, that's microwavable. So uh, I just put the DM in there and some, some tap water and, and uh, stuck it in the microwave. And again, watched it pretty closely so that uh, it didn't boil over in there. But I did get it boiling in there and uh, tinkered with it a little bit to try to get the, the defrost to just keep it barely boiling. But uh, you still had to mess with it. So anyway, I uh, pulled it out. It's it's uh, basically boiling temperature right now. My hands are <laughs> my hands are sort of getting burnt here. But anyway, covering it up with um, with uh, Saran wrap and or Glad wrap or whatever, and uh, putting it in the fridge. And then years after, it's both of them have been chilling in the fridge. And I'm going to decant off the um, the spent uh, wort. And uh, and then replace it with the with the uh, the fresh wort. Uh, again, both cooled to the same temperature after having stayed in the refrigerator for the you know for a requisite amount of time to let them equalize. Let the hot one equalize actually. Um, so there we go, uh, all decanted off. And uh, um, move that aside and and uh, go ahead and uh, pour in the, um, the new the fresh work and uh, fresh chilled of course it's not hot anymore otherwise you'd kill off your yeast obviously and um, oh, I think I left this shot in here by mistake oh well usually I try to cut out this stuff that's sort of more of the same um, so now we're ready to um, sanitize a piece of aluminum foil and stick it over the top again I'm not too much on plugs because you know they this is you know a piece of aluminum foil is fresh you know you know it's got no weird bugs on it and you know, spray it with a little star sand in your good shape so anyway I, I don't bother with them I mean it's sort of nice sometimes to see the bubbling but eh, whatever it won't fit in my fridge anyway if it has that on the top so um, yeah go with go with the tin foil um, and now we need to get her on the stir plate and actually I had a little problem here I I tried to line up the magnet and plug it in and it didn't work uh, it didn't start spinning because the yeast in the bottom was sort of you know not allowing the stir bar to sort of do its thing so cut <laughs> um, now you see a lot la layer of foam on the top that's because I had to shake the crap out of it to get it uh, to get all the yeast broken up into little chunks so that it would spin but it you know, I got it spinning here. As you can see, the the yeast chunks or our um, flocculated yeast is is uh, doing its thing. And here's the spent wort, just for fun. I threw it in the uh, hydrometer, and it came out to be about a 1010, which you know, I guess that's about right. Uh, I don't think there's anything left to eat in there. So here's the morning of the fifth day. Um, got a little bit a little bit of um, foam on there. Um, here's early in the evening of the sixth day and it's gone so again I didn't have have as many um, cuts and I didn't have any many as much video here but so basically you can see just tons of particulates in there you know all little little tiny little flocculated pieces of yeast that um, that are 
you know, scurrying around in there, uh, all ready to chow down on my um, on my my uh, five-gallon batch that I'm going to be pitching into. And so um, now you haven't got any foam on the top at all anymore, and um, uh, time to cold crash again, I suppose. Let's see what's coming up next in the next cut. Yeah, I guess this is going in the fridge. Oh yeah, oh first first we're gonna do the magnet thing. Yeah, I I, I actually just use an, another little uh, rare earth magnet that I got at Harbor Freight. You get a set of them for a couple bucks and hold the stir bar out of the way while you pitch so it doesn't end up in your in your fermenter. But I figured I'd pick it up there right now while I was thinking about it. And uh, here's another tip. Basically, if you want to get your stir bar out, don't do that <laughs> because that magnet will jump out of your fingers. So instead, put a little piece of paper towel around it and then comes right out. So anyway, there's a tip for the day. Glad you tuned in for the entire thing. Anyway, um, pitch the starter in a, is a, in a monster beer that's, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, basically did what, what it said there. And so it worked great. So anyway... Hope you enjoyed it.